this is Sunima. And this is Johannes. And you are watching Board Gaming Ramblings. Welcome to the first ever episode of Topical Ramblings. These are episodes where we take topics and we ramble about them yeah. like you might have guessed from the title. It's a title that is kind of in progress. Like if you have any ideas for a better name, let us know. Yeah, and also if you have things that you want us to talk about, please mm -hmm. let us know that as well. It can be basically anything in the yeah. hobby, in the industry, anything that we might have some interesting insight or just rambling sound that yes. you might find interesting. Today we are talking about rating games. Yeah. We are talking about something that, like when we started rating games, we just basically started doing it. Like quite a while ago, we just started jumping into it and saying like, oh, this is a seven, this is a seven. And after that, we have kind of, I felt for a while that I always rated everything a seven and I said <laughs> like that was the average game and a seven isn't really an average game on a point of ten. Mm. So today we're going to talk about why we rate from one to ten, how we do the ratings and a couple of other things and at the end of the video we are going to go through basically our one to ten. Like in the board game geek like mm. a one is this and a two is this. We're going to do the way we look at that and of yes. course that's going to be it's going to be variables, it's going to be differentiations but we are going to do that at the end with Game examples. Yes. So the first question that we have to get kind of out of the way, mm -hmm. a logical place to start is, do we even need a numerical rating system? Mm -hmm. I didn't want to start rating the games no. in the beginning. That was me. That was you, all you. And I still think that the reason, uh, like the um, discovering the actual opinions mm -hmm. of reviewers mm -hmm. and other people is more important than just the number yes but i've become kind of glad that we did it anyways mm -hmm. why is that because i feel like i can say many positive things about a game mm -hmm. but the the final verdict is kind of to prove did these positive things get the game all the way mm -hmm. or not all the way do you get yeah. it? Yeah, absolutely. Like, for example, we'll shut up and sit down. They basically have, like, do they recommend the game or not? Yeah. And, and that makes sense also. Like, yes. that is kind of the same thing that a rating does. Like, you can say, oh, there's lots of interesting things there. There's lots of interesting mechanisms, but it's still maybe only a six. Yeah. Compared to all the other games that comes out. Yes. Because you can't own all the games. And as mm, you might be more of a normal consumer of board games than we are. And because we need to play those games that are maybe the most amazing ones and try to tell you that you might not need them. Yes. And and then and, and I, I think it's a nice kind of way of doing it because it's the way we do it in all kind of things mm. in life. Like if you go to IMDb, you do rate the game, not rate the, the movie. Mm. If you go uh, to Amazon, all the products are rated from one to five mm. stars. Restaurants, yeah, yeah, on and on. Yeah, everything in life we basically rate. And I think it's a, there's kind of two reasons I want to do it. One, because I found it fun and I got you into it. Uh, and the second thing is that basically people are used to you doing it. They enjoy seeing like, oh, but what is the rating? But I also agree with you that the sums of the parts are more important than the, the number at the end. Mm -hmm. But I also want, and that's one thing that if you reference back to this video later and you will see like, eh, if you maybe you don't have the time to watch the whole review and just go to final thoughts and you hear some things and you see the number, you will say, okay, they thought that about the game. Yes. So you can get something out of the number as well. Mm -hmm. That is kind of the thing I, 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 I'm thinking about that. Yeah, I agree. So we are using a 10 point ranking system mm -hmm. and we don't use all the points in it. So what's even the point uh, you might ask us? What are the points? Of what's the points? Of points? Um, but it's important to have also the lower numbers uh -huh. so that a nine and a 10 and also an eight and a seven might mean something yes. that is actually good. And we hope that we don't get that many ones and twos and threes and four to actually play mm -hmm. and to rate because we are aiming to actually acquire games that we think that we will like. Yes. So the chances of us having a one through three or four game in our possession is very low. Yeah, four will happen. Yeah. Like, because we, we, I do most of the research and I try to, of course, end up with games that are fun because we do this for fun. Yes. If this was our job, like, like for example, for Tom and everyone at Dice Tower, it's something different because they, they kind of, they don't have to review everything, but there's a bigger chance of they're reviewing games that are ones and twos and threes yes. and fours. But we do it for fun. I mean, I do research. I'm, I'm looking for like, okay, will this be a fun game? And sometimes it's a miss. But some, most of the times I feel like I'm trying to do something. I'm, I'm, when we get to play something fun. And, and as you said, like if you don't have a 1 to 10, 
if you say no, our rating system is four to ten, then what is the four? Is the four then a one? And it's yeah. the five or two, like then it doesn't make it sense. It's a little complicated. And then we end up to the the, uh, the the big question of of them because you say it's a ten ten point rating, but, yeah. but is it really a twenty point rating? Yeah, is it? Uh, because we sometimes rate in like half steps. Yes. And I I don't know about you, mm -hmm. but I have a little comfort in half steps. Mm -hmm. If I can't decide on say a seven and an eight, uh -huh. I might use a half point because then I don't have to decide. <laughs> yeah. Well, it, yeah, it falls like between two stables. Yeah, two chairs. Yeah. Chairs, as we say in Norway. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, I, I absolutely agree. Like, yeah, because if you go to a five star rating in Amazon, it's 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 actually a ten star. Yeah, it it's is. a ten point rating. And in Norway, I don't know how they do grades in in school in other countries, but we basically in in Norway we usually have a one through six. And then you also can get a plus and a minus. Yeah, A plus, B plus, B minus. Oh yeah, you yes. do have that. I've seen it in the movies. In the uh, movies. But so yeah, you can. So basically, it's it's a six point rating system, but then it's a bit more. You can't yeah. have a minus, a, a one minus, and you can't have a, a a six plus. Some teachers gave that, but it doesn't mean nothing. Like it's perfect, and then more. Yeah. You can't give him a ten. 10 and a half because it's up to 10. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah, that is kind of the reason like I I'm used to it in everything. Also, like it would be no sense to me. Like people on Board Game Geek rate things like 7.2. Yeah. And I'm like, I... what is the difference between, oh, no, this isn't a 7.1, it's a 7.2. Okay, my, my ratings of the games are a little fluent. Uh -huh. So if a game was 7 last year, mm -hmm. it might have dropped to a 6 because I have gotten more games that are more exciting in the meantime, mm -hmm. or we played it lately and I discovered how fun it actually is. Yeah. Maybe it'll rise. So I think like uh, grading in this 0 0.1 decimals are, yeah, useless. not, yeah, it's useless because my ratings aren't that strict uh, anyways. But having a, a little leeway with mm -hmm. the 0 0.5s gives me that I don't have to like really deduce, okay, is it a 8 or is it a 9? Yep. Okay, I can play it at Christmas, blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. I mm -hmm. then ha have like this golden middle way that I yeah. can lean on. I, I absolutely agree. Like for me, that makes sense. It makes sense to have the 0 0.5 mm. because it can be between an 8 and a 9. Yes. But but then like it's just fun to think about those people that rated like 7.25 like how do they sit down and be like no it's what is the what is my like i have a hundred point rating system oh this is 7.1 this is 7.2 this is 7.3 this is 7.4 that would mean you rate a lot of games and you have yeah. a lot of free time uh, <laughs> because but that is very strange i want to talk some a little bit about the tens on our yes. list because we rarely rate games a 10. We have never done a review where we rated a no, game a 10. No, we haven't. And I... I the I'm closest not... was my 9.5 at the canyon. Oh, you gave it a 9.5. I yeah. gave it a 9, I yeah. think. I, I have games in my top 10 mm -hmm. that are rated a 10. Yeah. But there is often that I, I feel like the games that I play in the reviews aren't going on my top 10 mm -hmm. and therefore because there are a few nines in my top 10 as well mm -hmm. they can't beat them and therefore they aren't a 10 yeah to me. I, I feel like this is a hard one because for me i am very it's very hard for me to give a 10 because mm -hmm. for me in my 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 brain not anymore because we now i talked about like made this rating system yeah. but a 10 was like the perfect game but then you don't have a 10 and if you then don't use one two three you basically have a four two nine Rating Four system. To nine. Yeah, but yeah. you know what I mean. Like, yes. it, I, and I think I next year I'm gonna be uh, not gonna say like I'm gonna throw tens here and there, but I hope we get to play some games I can actually rate a ten. Yeah. Because that doesn't mean it has to be in my top ten of all time, but it mm -hmm. has to be one of the best games I have ever played at that yeah. time. And of course, that can get lower yes. in a year or two years or something like that. But I feel like I've been too strict on the tens. Yeah. And I, I've always been that way, like in movies as well. Like when I rate movies, like, no, it can't be a 10 because 10 is the perfect movie. And I have to look for the next one to see if that's yeah. the perfect movie. And that the perfect game doesn't exist. Mm. The perfect movie doesn't exist. The perfect anything doesn't exist. Well, I beg to differ, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what I mean? Like, yes. and, and, I, and I think for me, I'm going to try to be a bit more loose on that uh, need to be perfect. Like I'm going to mm. be a bit more loose on how to... To rate that 10 to get get it actually used because 
it does mean something when you give a 10. Like, that is the highest praise I can give for a game. Mm. And I do play games where I feel like, oh, this is an amazing game. This, yes. is, a game I, this is a game I want to people to know is amazing. Yeah. So, like, for example, Tekkenu, I might have given that a 10 if I if I weren't like in my brain like that block mm, of yes. feeling like that's a kind of like a mental block of not mental blocks a game but mental block in my, my mind of of having that 10 is illegal yeah yeah I can get what you mean it's like that in many other aspects of life mm -hmm. also uh, if you take a survey for a shop that you've been to that asks how happy you are it's seldom that you get a 10 as your satisfactory answer there yes especially you... if it only goes to 5 yeah <laughs> so uh, it's I feel like that in many ways that uh -huh. we are a little too strict by giving like compliments and praise to what deserves it maybe. yeah do you also like feel like you have that mental block of of like 10 had to be perfect? Oh yeah, I've thought about it lately and as uh -huh. I said, I feel more uh, loose to give it away now than mm -hmm. I was before. I think more of the games in my top 10 has earned a 10 than I would think of them as uh, Paris last year, for yeah. example. So publishers, send us your games, we might give it a 10 now. Ha. So that is basically all the things that we wanted to go through before we do our, our rating system. Yes. So we hope that gave you some like kind of meaning to how we approach rating and that it had made it easier for you to see like the way we think about it. And hopefully the rating system also helps with that. So, but if you have any like thoughts, any questions, please leave them in the comments. And now we're ready for our rating system. Now we're going to talk about the rating system and this is going to be kind of like a strange top 10. Yeah. Because we are going to talk about 10 games. It's not going to be like the best games. It's going to be from the worst from to the, the best. From the worst to the best, yeah. So we're going to go through them and we're going to have an example of each rating. And we're going to basically talk a little bit about what we call each thing. The first ones we hopefully not going to be able to have to use. But we actually own a game that we, we, we rate a 1. Yeah. And the first, like, like a 1 for me is not a game. Like it doesn't <laughs> work. Like sometimes we say in reviews like there's nothing, there's nothing wrong here. Like it, it works Functionally, mechanics. It is a game. It works. There's nothing wrong with a game. That might be a game we gave a 4 or a 5, but 1 is not a game. Yep. And this is also number 1 another way. It's the first game I backed on Kickstarter, and I own it for that reason. And that game is Sogar's Gaze. Oh, look at this beauty. And, and huh? look at the back of it. It doesn't have a back. That is like, it's not a splutter game, but it doesn't have a back. Amazing. So this isn't a game. Because when these arrived, it wasn't playable. Like many of the rules were like, okay, so you can end up in many situations where you just think the game can't end. You have it in because the game is like you have to collect a couple of cards, and there's one copy of one card I want to collect. Mm. And then if you get that card in your hand, you can just have it in your hand, and I can never win. Yeah. And that is a great game, guys. And also, it's extremely random, and you just can end up in that yeah, it's situation. A, it's a dungeon caller, push your luck kind of game where you just open the stack at a random point, draw cards, and decide when to stop. And you're diving kind of in this uh, dungeon for items, but it's super random, and it doesn't work. No, it doesn't work. And I, I spent seventy dollars on this. It was my first Kickstarter. <laughs> And uh, and yes, you didn't it's... consult with me. I think no, this was that, uh, that this was early on our, in our relationship and early in my relationship to Kickstarter. <laughs> so because actually, after this game arrived, they ended up sending out newsletters where the backers had designed the game. So Good then job. you could actually yeah. play the game. But 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 for now, this is not a game. Nope. Number one, Sogar's Gaze, not a game. Yeah. So a uh, number two for me and uh, for us is a game. But still, no, we we don't want to play it. It's almost unplayable. Uh -huh. We are at risk to call it not a game. So we have an example for that as well, and that is Dungeon Roll. This is also a Kickstarter backing, backed by yours truly. Yes, that I'm... genius over there. And this is a boring game. Like this is a game that you can play one player. That is okay. But if you play more than one player, then basically the other player is just waiting for you for 10 minutes to do your turn. It and felt like like really slow, really boring Yahtzee. Oh yes, that yes. makes sense. It's a push to luck Yahtzee game, which is just boring. <laughs> and, and I keep this also because like these two games are in the collection still because of nostalgia, because like I can't get rid of this. want to laugh a little. I want to remember this. So yeah, yeah. number two, not or two, a game, but still. No. Nope. No. Number three. Number three, this is where we come into games that are might be games. Number three is a bad game. 
Yeah. It might be badly designed. It might be utterly unbalanced. It just might be no fun at all. And it might and shouldn't really be published and doesn't really have the right to exist. And that example is an amazing game called Discover Lands Unknown. This was a huge project from Pandas Wild. They're like, oh, isn't it a great idea to make a game that just like ran like it's basically a roguelike, but you can't get a new randomly generated dungeon without buying the game again. And it was like said that it's gonna be like so many different stories and so many different we have multiple copies of this game and they are almost the same. One of them can't be played because the punch boards are badly Yeah, but that made. doesn't really... I know, but it's just like, it's just, it didn't work. It was a nice idea, but it's just a bad design, not fun, and shouldn't be published. Yeah, I agree. So, uh, we are up to actually ratings that we could give yeah. right now. We could give a these four. as well, if we play Yeah, this. we did. Um, but like, a 4 is... Uh, let's say that a 5 is average, uh -huh. because we're going to say that in the next Spoiler! point. Uh, so 4 is below average, mm -hmm. it's boring, it doesn't give me anything, uh, others might like it, but for me... They it, are wrong. Yeah, for me they're wrong. So we have an example for this as well, and this is Twa Dice. We I recently am... reviewed this. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so this, I've heard people liking this game as well, but for us, it just fell flat. We didn't enjoy it and we didn't get much out, out of it. So that's that's the four. Yeah. So number five then is average. average. Five is average. It's not it's not bad. It's just nothing there that makes me feel like it's interesting. Uh, it's a game I don't want to play again. Uh, I might play it if some like somebody. I will not run away if somebody says like, oh let's play this. I will say. Yeah, okay. Oh, I have all of these nice shiny new games that I need to play, but we will play this five. And average is like, it's okay. Some people will like it. I won't. So mm. um, our example for this is a game that Cinema loves called Ticket to Ride. Yay! But it's not a bad game. There's no, nothing it's not. wrong with the game, no, it's as not. I tend to say, but it's Ticket to Ride, so. Yeah. It is a Ticket to it's Ride. Ticket to Ride. So, a rating of six is an above average game. But there are so many just above average games mm -hmm. so it tends to become a game on a pile of other uh, above average games yeah. that we forget and we just just that hasn't got that chance to stay in our collection that is true and we have an example for this as well that is gaitopia uh, this is actually a game that we are selling yeah at this point and we've enjoyed our few plays of it it's just there's so many games. Yeah, yeah. It, 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 it's, it's a fun game, yeah. but it's a part of a part of games. It's a yeah. game a part of games. Because it's not anything that makes it feel like, oh, I need to play this again. Mm. I will not be sad if I go somewhere and people say, oh, I really want to play Skytopia. Yeah. I will mm -hmm. sit down and I will have fun. Yes. But it's it's not a game that I will have ever desired to, to choose to play or have, have in the collection. Basically. Yeah. So number seven then, or seven is where it comes to starting to be a good game. Yeah. It's not amazing, but it's like, mm, this is good. Mm. It might stay in the collection for quite a while. Okay. It's one of those games that probably like there's many seven games that I look at and I'm like, oh, that would be fun to play again. Yeah, like, we have is... many sevens in our collection. Oh yeah, this many. is where, because we have a, a large collection, we have around 700 games, six, 700 games. That's if we, a lot. If we had only 50, we wouldn't keep sevens. But, yeah. but because we have many more than that, it, it's fun. And I think sevens is kind of like a game I can play once a year, maybe twice a year, or, or it might be a game that just in the shelf down here, and then in two years I look and it's like, oh, that's a fun one. Mm -hmm. So a uh, number seven, or a uh, rating seven is, uh, and as an example, is Carpe Diem from yeah. Sevenfeld. So if you know that we, we love Sevenfeld, and this yeah. is a good one, yeah. but it's not one I, I have decided to play all the time. Yeah, we really like Carpe Diem. Mm -hmm. This is a solid game, and uh, we think it's really good. Absolutely, but it's, it's a seven. It's a seven, yeah. yeah. And then we have uh, 8, and 8 for us is a great game. This is a game that would definitely stay in a collection. Mm -hmm. It might also end up on top lists, mm -hmm. and we will always, always uh, want to play them if somebody... Yeah, and yeah, you might suggest offers. playing it. Yeah, actually. If you don't have a 9 to 10 you want to play, or if you're just stuck in the mood. It's not like I always have to play the 10. Yeah. Because of different different ways, different yeah. reasons. Absolutely. So we have an example for that, and that is Awkward Guests. It is. Awkward uh, Guests is a like deduction game where absolutely. you're uh, solving crimes and taking 
Names. Names. <laughs> Rolling dice and taking names. Listen yes. to the podcast. It's good. Yeah. So you're you're deducing who the killer is and the murder weapon and where it happened. And this is a really solid game. It's my favorite deduction game. Yeah, so it is. So if you would like this mini review, get it if you like deduction games. Yes. It's great. So you can have that or else I'm going to be out of the frame. So a nine then. A nine is a game I love. Like this is like, oh, this is amazing. This is super, super, super cool. And this is a game that will end up in top list. It might end at the top of top list. It will end up in the top 50, like not all top 50 games. Maybe even there's some eights. There is some eights probably in the top 50. Mm, yeah. uh, but these are some of the guest, best games I ever played. To reach a nine, it has to be that, oh, I love this. Like those games where I get that, ooh, this is amazing mm. in, my, in my heart. Not in the heart, but in the feelings yeah and, and and as you would say we have an example for this as well if people are not surprised anymore what? this is nations we love nations this is a really good game this is my favorite uh, what do you call it civ game yeah civilization building game and uh, i when we play it i really enjoy myself mm -hmm. and when i see it on the shelf i think oh i want to play this game yes it's good. I would like to play it now. And, and it's good at two players, it's good at three, and it's actually good all the way up to five. Yes. It does take a while with five, especially if you played in the middle of the night, like we did. Yeah. Five players, five hours, I fell asleep in between my turns. Whoop to do. But it's it's, it's such a it. great game. Yes. I love it, and this is one that I, I will never stop loving. I will no. never yeah. I would love to get the expansion. I don't know if it's even available. But if anyone have to have the expansion, not need it, please send it our way because we, we would like it. Please send it our way to Norway. Yay! <laughs> I had to say that. Okay, then so we're at number 10. We're at number 10, and 10 is a masterpiece. Mm -hmm. 10 is basically top of the crop. Uh, it will be in my top 10s of all time. Yeah. Um, yeah, the top 50, yeah, of course. And we will always see myself, I will always see myself loving this game. Yes. I will never, this game will basically never leave the collection. That's true. So we have our example for that, and that is Lisboa. <laughs> a beast of a game. A almost perfect game. Like this is always fun. This is one of those games that when I played it the first time, I was like, "This, I'm in love." Uh, mm. Like I'm also in love with you, but I'm also in love with this, this, yeah, this sport game. Like this is this is this is true love. This is amazing. <laughs> uh, with Talos Zora is an amazing designer, and for me and. I think for you, this is like his his his, his best game. Yeah, uh, it is so good. It's just so many decisions, so much stuff to do, and I I love it. Yeah. So this is how we rate our games. It is. And uh, so here is some background about all our numbers. If those numbers didn't mean anything to you, now they uh, hopefully, hopefully do. do. So we hope you enjoyed this video. Yeah, absolutely. This was fun, and we hope these videos will give you joy and, and uh, if you, as you said in the beginning if you're just here at the end uh, please subscribe and also please uh, give us some ideas for other topics that we can make videos about and that is the end of the video it is thank you so much for watching i'm johannes I'm and you've been watching board gaming ramblings and bye bye